Part 11, The Specific Anarchist Organization, SAO. Anarchist Propaganda. The Specific Anarchist Organization is also dedicated to anarchist propaganda. Start quote, Propaganda is not and cannot be but the constant, tireless repetition of the principles that must be our guide in the conduct that we must follow in the various circumstances of life. End quote. Thus, we understand propaganda as the dissemination of the ideas of anarchism and, therefore, as a fundamental activity of the anarchist organization. Its objective is to make anarchism known and to attract people to our cause. Propaganda is one of the activities of the anarchist organization and not the only activity. It should be performed constantly and in an organized manner. Start quote, the organization's propaganda must be done un uninterruptedly, just as the propaganda of all the other postulates of the anarchist ideal, end quote. To have strength, propaganda needs to be performed constantly. Propaganda that is done once in a while is not enough to make anarchism known and much less to draw people in. Therefore, the first assertion that we make is that propaganda must be continuous. Besides this, propaganda should not be done in an isolated way since, like all uncoordinated activity, it lacks the desired strength. As we have seen, organization, understood as the coordination of forces for the realization of an objective, multiplies the result of individual work, and this also applies to propaganda. Then we are, when we are organized, the result of our propaganda work, be it theoretical or practical propaganda, is multiplied and achieves results far superior to the simple sum of individual forces. Therefore, the second assertion that we make is that propaganda must be done in an organized way because this multiplies its results. Start quote. Casual, isolated propaganda, which is often done to calm one's own conscience or simply to alleviate passion through discussion, does little or nothing. Under the conditions of inconsistency and misery in which the masses are to be found with so many forces that oppose them, such propaganda is forgotten before its efforts can accumulate and have fertile results. The terrain is very ungrateful for seeds sown at random to germinate and take root. End quote. We argue that the specific anarchist organization utilizes any means that are at its disposable <laughs> disposal for the realization of this constant and organized propaganda. Firstly, with respect to the theoretical, educational, and or cultural sphere, with the realization of courses, talks, debates, conferences, study groups, websites, email, theater, bulletins, newspapers, magazines, books, videos, music, libraries, public events, radio programs, television programs, libertarian schools, etc. We truly value all this propaganda and think that it is fundamental in order to attract people and ensure that they know the critiques and also the constructive proposals of anarchism. Thus, it is possible to develop anti-authoritarian values in people to stimulate their consciousness to make them see the exploitation and the domination in a more critical way such that they look at alternatives of struggle and organization. These people can be approached seeking to deepen their knowledge, to involve them in discussion, and also to organize them for action. This type of propaganda, when performed on a large scale, is fundamental since it functions as a social lubricant that slowly changes the culture in which we live and makes the introduction of anarchist ideas and practices into society easier. This massive propaganda work slowly turns the people's consciousness and causes the ideology of capitalism, which is already transmitted in the form of culture, to be more questioned and even less reproduced. As we understand consciousness as a capacity that people have to know values and ethical principles and to apply them, we believe this propaganda active activity to be highly relevant for the permanent gain of consciousness. In the first instance is to remove prejudices and capitalist culture, then to make people come to see authoritarianism critically. Finally, to take some of these people to the struggle against authoritarianism. We understand that any process of social transformation 
with final objectives like those that we propose will depend on acceptance, or at least on non-rejection, of large sectors of the population. And propaganda, in this sense theoretical, educational, and or cultural, will contribute significantly to this. Thus, start quote, the propaganda carried out by organized anarchists is also a way of manifestation in order to prepare the future society. It is a collaboration in order to construct a way to influence the environment and to modify its conditions, end quote. However, we must understand the limits of this propaganda. Propaganda with respect to this theoretical, educational, and or cultural sphere has as its principal objective to increase the level of consciousness. Therefore, it aims to transform people's ideas. And this is the reason why we see serious limits in this model of propaganda. This gain in consciousness does not mean in any way that the exploitation and domination of capitalist society will tend to decrease. It also does not mean necessarily that people will go on to organize themselves in order to struggle. Today, the mainstream media and even the growth of the cities, community fragmentation, among other factors, make propaganda on a massive scale very difficult and we must remember that even when there were no such difficulties and when anarchist propaganda was very strong, with permanently functioning cultural centers, newspapers with very high daily runs, social transformation was not guaranteed. Ultimately, we can consider that even with all the difficulties that exist for us to realize mass propaganda, the gain in consciousness does not necessarily mean organization and struggle and neither the end or even a decrease of exploitation and domination. We could say that in a hypothetical situation in which everyone is conscious, nevertheless, we would continue to be exploited and dominated. Therefore, start quote. Neither the writers, nor the philosophers, nor their works, not even the socialist new newspapers constitute socialism alive and well. The latter can only find real existence in clarified revolutionary instinct in collective will and in organization. And when this is instinct, this will and this organization are lacking. The best books in the world are nothing but empty theories and impotent dreams." End quote. For this reason, we hold that, besides the propaganda that takes place in the theoretical, educational, and or cultural sphere, we must also maintain, principally, propaganda that takes place in struggle and organization that is propaganda in social work aimed at social insertion. By taking place in the ambit of the class struggle and of social movements, the work of anarchist propaganda aims to mobilize, organize, and influence social movements with anarchist practice. We remember insistently that the influence of movements by anarchism means seeking for them to have the characteristic that we stand for. Force, class struggle perspective, combativeness, autonomy, direct action, direct democracy, and revolutionary perspective. To achieve this influence, the specific anarchist or organization carries out its pr propaganda emphatically through words and primarily by example. We understand the entire process of social work and insertion that we dealt with earlier as the main propaganda work that the anarchist organization should develop. In struggle, while active minority, the anarchists create social movements, join already existing movements, and seek to influence them as much as possible. Always by example, to function in the most libertarian and egalitarian way possible. This work is therefore, start quote, to educate for freedom, to elevate the consciousness of their, the workers, own strength and capacity as men habituated to obedience and passivity. It is therefore necessary to, to proceed in a way in which the people act for themselves, or at least believe to be doing so out of instinct and self-inspiration, even though in reality the thing that has been suggested to them." End quote. Even though... Start quote. 
to educate for freedom, to elevate the consciousness of their, the workers, own strength and capacity as men habituated to obedience and passivity. It is therefore necessary to proceed in a way in which the people act for themselves, or at least believe to be doing so out of instinct and self-inspiration, even though in reality the thing has been suggested to them." End quote. In this way, anarchist propaganda serves the whole work process of the anarchists while active minority within social movements and in the actual creation of the popular organization. When we perform anarchist propaganda, we must think necessarily about the camp most conducive to it. We understand that the best propaganda is that which we realize among the social movements that give shape to the class struggle, thus seeking short-term gains, working among the people organized by need, we understand it to be possible to plant the seeds of our anarchism by means of propaganda and carry society to a revolutionary process that opens the way to libertarian socialism. It is not that other alternatives do not serve us, but this reflection on where and for whom to perform propaganda must always be made.